first of all, I did not come up with the title, um, so I'll, I'll get into that in a second. And it's not a great title for uh, this hour of the day, the last talk, the last uh, obviously parallel session. So um, I decided to, you know, that, that's a mouthful, okay? So I decided, you know what, let's, let's forget about the title. Let's talk about the learning outcomes that we want from this um, talk. So I just really want you to go away with three things. Um, the first of all, I suppose I'd like you to know who is this guy and why is he talking to me? Uh, the second question that I'd like you to understand when you move, uh, leave this talk is, <clears throat> what is the GAA and what's um, so important about them? And the third is, uh, so what does all this have to do with Moodle? So, okay, so I'm gonna first of all start with, uh, who is this guy? Okay, so during the MOOC, I've noticed that when people introduce themselves, they tell them their name, where they're from, you know, qualified, blah, 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 blah. So, but one thing always stands out that people prick their ears up, and it's the, what version of Moodle did you first use? And for me, that was Moodle 1.4, back in 2004. And uh, it was in DCU, actually, um, do, when it, we uh, started looking at how we could move a databases course into uh, Moodle for the first time. And as you can see, um, it's come a long way. It uh, has a certain GeoCities look. Now, hopefully, I'm not aging myself here. But, but in saying that, I was, when I found this, I, t I was actually going, wow, there's a lot of stuff that's still the same. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, and um, it really has stood the test of time. There was a lot of things there that uh, you know, was quite uh, future looking and um, you know, has had longevity right to, to, right to today. Now, some of those icons were a little hit and miss. I, th I think my favorite one's the forms where it looks like two faces are about to face off each other. But uh, yeah, no. Um, and the second thing that um, a lot of uh, presenters do, and this is really just to generate an emotive response from you, to really kind of feel that I'm a human being up here and to go easy on me is to say that I have a dog. <laughs> I, this is my dog, it's Barley, it's a golden retriever, and the what's most important about it, today is his birthday. And he's nine years old, and instead of being with him, I'm here with you, so just so you know. Okay, and then obviously I have to do the whole obligatory, I'm a Moodle partner from Innovation, we're a Moodle partner, uh, we're also 27001, we love security, we love data, we're also a Microsoft partner, you've probably used our plugins, if you've used any sort of integration with Microsoft Teams, or uh, uh, Office 365, or Azure, blah, 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 you, you know, you get that stuff. Okay, so now you know who I am. Okay, now onto the more interesting stuff. So what is the GAA? Anyone know what the GAA, ever heard of the GAA? Oh, okay, Rob, <laughs> uh, anybody else? No, okay. So the GAA is the largest sporting organization in Ireland, okay? And um, that's saying something because, you know, we're in a Rugby World Cup uh, at the moment and Ireland is the number one team in the world at the moment, we'll see how that goes. But it's not the biggest sport in Ireland. Uh, and in a country of um, uh, four and a half million in the Republic and then about five and a half million uh, overall in the county, or in the, in the uh, island as a whole, it's not, it, the, the GAA is the largest sporting organization in Ireland. And it's, it's two principal sports, there are others, but the two principal, principal sports are hurling here, which when I tell Americans, I have to explain, it's not a game made up of people competitively vomiting. It's actually a game on a field with sticks and uh, balls. A ball's about the size of a, call a slitter, it's about the size of a tennis ball, where basically there, it's a, a field game where they're hitting over the bar. And then we have um, Gaelic football, which is basically like Australian rules football, but with a, a circular ball. And we have 2,200 clubs around the country um, uh, and around the world. So every single village, town in Ireland has a club and they're integral to those towns. They, they're not just about sports, but they're also about Irish society in general. If there is any sort of, you know, big birthdays, things, uh, funerals, things like that, a lot, of the, 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 a lot of the events go back to the GAA club. They're integral to Irish society. And the, the whole calendar in the GAA revolves around the championship, which happens in the um, summer, where uh, the 32 counties uh, around the island of Ireland compete to become the All-Ireland champion. And that happens in this stadium here called Croke Park, which is uh, basically holds 82,000 people. Uh, my team is Kildare, okay? So last time we were in the, the final was 1998, but I still, I still think about it. Um, but it's 82,000 people. And to put that in context, some of the counties have uh, just over, over 100,000 people in them. So if you're a burglar and your county makes it a final, that is the day to hit that county because there's nobody home, okay? So anyway, um, so I want to just kind of set the context of the GA, and I've done this by ripping off a, 
a video from from the national broadcaster, uh, which is basically advertising the GA. So this is a short Our video that gives you an idea of what we're... idea. That sport it could be something more. A connection that runs through our bloodline streets and corridors. A link to the past. A bridge to the future. A tie to home. A unique bond that can't be bought or broken. For we are stronger together when we all simply connect. This summer, get closer to the championship in more ways than ever before. Keep connected to the games you love. Listen to the noise. Listen to the heartbeats of the people of Ireland. So, it gives you an idea of, of you know, the, the kind of, um, you know, the kind of, the kind of operation of the GAAs. But when you take all that and you take the athletes that you saw on the field there, those athletes are probably training six days a week. Uh, they are uh, training as much as soccer players, rugby players. But the one thing to say, it's all amateur. Every single person that's involved in the GAA, except for those that kind of, the, you know, the management layer, the, the upper management, they're all volunteers. They're all amateurs. None of those players get paid. They all go to, do that in front of 82,000 people. And then afterwards, they're your policemen, they're your or police women, they're your farmers, they're your engineers, uh, they're your teachers in many cases. And, and they just go back to their job after that, after being uh, a hero or a villain, depending on how it goes, um, um, as, and uh, go back to their normal day. And that, um, and it's also one thing to say about it, it's very much a grassroots organization. So um, the, 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 the club is basically the most important thing, trying to get, coaches and players are all working together and um, this is basically my club i know it's really badly the pixelated now uh, but that's the leaks of gaa this is what's known as buntus and it's really important because basically this is t kids that are between two and uh, six years old and it's kids of all backgrounds it's uh, w the one thing that we have in ireland that we haven't had really ever it's immigration because we have a lot of new irish coming in so to get those people assimilated into irish society the ga does a lot of work to bring those people in and it's not you know while the kids work together that's fine what's really important is actually the parents parents coming up learning about the ga and working with their community as volunteers with volunteers working together now you have eight hundred thousand members and what, what, what does, I suppose, um, the next question you have, okay, you've got a brief idea of GAA. What does all this have to do with Moodle? Okay, so back to the actual point of the code conference, okay? So the first thing to say is that for the GAA to work, education is key. You have to have um, uh, a way to educate these coaches, these uh, players, these parents, all about what their, uh, what their, what their role in the GAA is who, uh, you know, what their responsibilities are and, um, you know, and what they need to do in order to fulfill their role within the GAA system, I suppose. And the second thing is that for the GAA to work, compliance is key. Most of the GAA is made up of children, okay? So in order for the, for the GAA to work, we have a lot of adults coaching children. We need to make sure that we have children safeguarding in place. We need to make sure that all the coaches are uh, vetted by the police. Uh, that their background checks are done, that that's done on a continuous basis, and that the clubs know who has been vetted and who hasn't been vetted. So there needs to be a lot of safeguarding put in place. So how do we do that? So we have put a platform in place called Tober um, with the GAA, which is basically a mixture of a few different technologies. Um, which is a com combination of a Drupal, Moodle, and Mahara site uh, to, to allow the GAA to basically fulfill, fulfill its role. Now, I'm going to do something that probably is ill-advised, but anyway, I'm going to do it. Uh, and I'm going to try and do a very, very short uh, demo of what that looks like, okay? And with the magic of... No, that's not going to work. Okay, I know. Uh, if I just bring this... See, and make that smaller and bring this over here. And actually, that did work. But now I have to look up there. Okay, so this is the site, and uh, everything is looking good. Okay, so basically, the, the, the first thing about the site is that it's very important. I should probably look in the mic. It's very important that when people get on the site, they get what they need really quickly. You know, they don't want to be messing around with courses. They have a very clear reason for being here. They're a coach or a fee or they're a player, and they just want to get in 
to what they need quickly so they can get on with their life because they're, they're not being paid to do this. So for example, if they're a coach, they're coming into coach education and they want to understand, you know, what does it mean to be a coach? Well, this kind of gives you details of, you know, the various different coaching accreditation, what's involved, uh, what's required to be a coach. Most of it will be around badging, around um, uh, safeguarding, children safeguarding, but as you go into the kind of more formal aspect of coaching, then there's coaching badges that need to be there. And then that, allow, for, the, uh, for the coach, they can track all that using their dashboard here. And then they go into my achievements here. Um, so, zoom on. Oh, of course it doesn't work. Okay, there we go. Okay, so they can tr track all this. And this is basically, it's all tracked through Moodle. So the, the, uh, the, all the kind of gamification, obviously it's a games-based organization, we use a lot of gamification. All the gamification is using uh, Level Up, it's using the, the paid for version of Level Up that we're putting into the Drupal site. To, um, and then we have uh, all the different accreditations and um, uh, around uh, police vetting and things like that. All that and, and the courses are all basically completions of courses and things like that. They're basically pulled back into this uh, dashboard. And then, and then in order for, um, so, What's really key to this is so that they can see what they need to know quickly. But then if they're going into a structured course, well, of course, we're going into Moodle in that case. So uh, there's a seamless integration between uh, Moodle and Drupal uh, to bring uh, the user back and forth into, uh, into, into the Moodle environment. And it's gone incredibly slow, but anyway, and we're using a TOS-based environment. But basically, what basically what I'm trying to say here is, is when there is structured learning, we're using Moodle. When we're not using structured learning, we're generally using Drupal. So for, for as a last final example, a lot of stuff that happens in the GAA um, around coaching is around just in time or, or point of need uh, learning, okay? So this is where, um, so I'll give you an example, very quick example. My wife coaches my daughter's under sevens uh, team, okay? She has never done anything in the GA in her life, okay? But really important for her to be there because for girls to see uh, women coaching, it's incredibly important and it's incredibly hard to get mothers to, into coaching. So she decided to do that. Um, and, and, but in order for her to understand what, the, what what she needs to be able to do, the coach, the actual coaches send the helpers um, details of what the, what the drills are. And this is basically what she looks at in, before the actual session. So these are basically the drills that, are, that they're going to do. And there's probably a little video here showing uh, the drill. And this gets them prepared. This exercise is a progression on the roll and pick up exercise. And then, then they can kind of move on to more, uh, more, more harder kind of stuff, which is like things like the solo run and hurling. And what's great about this is that we have coaches now on the field. This is a modified game using this, to develop using the player's ability so to that solo they, run they in a the, game situation. The exact drill, and they are able to do it um, uh, at point of need. Point of need learning is really Mark important. Mark out a playing so, area, 40 yeah. meters long and. There we go, easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, point of need is really important. Be able to understand, bring a tablet onto the, or even a phone to do that. Uh, but obviously the, the more structured learning has to go through a Moodle platform and also all the compliance goes through a Moodle platform because it has that tracking um, um, and uh, allows for that to happen. So, and, so that's pretty much it. That's all I want to say. I hope that I achieved the three questions. Do I, does everyone know who the, who the GA are now? Everyone know why we use Moodle? And everyone know who I am? No, I'll probably forget all that. <laughs> all right, that's it. Thank you very much. We have a question. Hi. Hello. Th thanks for the talk. You said you used Mahara, but then you haven't oh, shown yeah. anything I about didn't Mahara. Say, yeah, yeah, very good. Take it, yeah, take the eye. Touch away. Yeah. So um, in the schools in our in our, there's a year where they do a lot of practical experience. Um, so it's called transition year. It's basically um, it's between their two major exams. And what they do there is with the GAA, with the GAA, sorry, uh, with the GAA is that they. Um, they do coaching basically badges through it, and, and th those badges then go on to their Mahari portfolio because they can then use that to show other sporting or, or organizations like rugby. 
which we'll see how that goes, uh, or the, or, uh, the, uh, or the soccer, soccer associations, you know, what coaching they've done. So it, it can be transferable in that way. It just gives them also a kind of sense of achievement because they're, all, they're you know, they're second level students that, you know, need to kind of understand um, achievement and have a build a portfolio of what they've done as part of that program. Oh, blah, blah, blah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're good. Well done, y'all made it. <laughs> Thank you.